everyone from Yerushalayim. I would like to share a, a short thought about the upcoming holiday of Shavuos. Rav Nachman of Breslov brings, in the name of his great-grandfather, the Baal Shem Tov, a very, very interesting question that perhaps will resonate with a lot of us. And that is, we find that when a person first becomes attracted to Torah and mitzvot, a person becomes a Baal Shuvah, there's a certain amount of excitement and passion and geschmack in everything that they do. Every davening is wonderfully connected to God and Shabbos Kodesh and Birkas HaMazon and every mitzvah is so exciting and so beautiful and so vibrant. And yet with the passage of time, uh, things become routine, a person becomes complacent. In fact, there's a whole genre of jokes, which unfortunately might be a little serious, as to when is a Baal Tshuva fully integrated into the regular religious community? And the answers are uh, when they can dive in, when they can bench in two minutes, uh, when they'd rather sleep Friday night than discuss Torah. In other words, all of these jokes have a punchline that when you stop getting excited about Yiddishkeit, ah, oh, Hashem, you're now a regular member of the Frum community. The Baal Shem Tov asks, how can that even be possible? I understand that you can simply give me an answer that anything that a person does over and over and over again, they lose their enthusiasm. But that shouldn't make sense for Taira and Mitzvahs. If Taira and Mitzvahs connect us to the Ribbon Shalolam, then by definition, the more Torah I learn, the more mitzvos I do, the closer I am to God. How is it even possible to talk about diminishing returns when I do more and I serve Hashem, and yet I, seem, I seemingly get less out of it? It's an interesting question. How do you explain the burnout that a religious Jew experiences as opposed to the initial excitement of serving God. And the Baal Shem Tov gives a remarkable muscle. Let's imagine a baby who is learning how to walk. And initially, the parents are holding the baby by the shoulder. So the baby takes one step and another step and another step. And the baby is thinking to himself, if he or she could verbalize their thoughts, hey, this isn't so bad. This walking stuff is working out pretty well. But at some point, the parents feel that the baby is ready for the next step. So the parents let go of the baby and as the baby takes a step forward, in all likelihood, the baby is gonna plop down. Now, just to digress for a moment, one of the most impressive and amazing things we can notice in our children is that no matter how many times the baby falls down, the baby will get up again to walk. The baby does not get discouraged. We are hardwired not to give up. We are hardwired to accomplish. This is not only true in walking, this is true even for crawling. I very well remember uh, when my son was uh, just a little, little baby, wasn't even walking yet. Crawling itself was a big, big task for him. And he was grunting and moaning as he was pulling his body across the floor. And I was thinking to myself, what are you working so hard? You have a playpen, you have toys, you don't have to move. And yet, there is something in the human personality that says, I have to grow, I have to expand. We are hardwired not to give up. If in later life, even in childhood, we get discouraged, that is an acquired attribute. That is not something that is innate. Our innate personalities go in the opposite direction. But that's a little bit of a digression. Let's go back to the muscle of the Baal Shem Tov. So the baby could verbalize to himself. If the baby could verbalize, the baby might say, why was walking so easy a second ago? And now I'm falling and I'm stumbling. And the answer is, walking was so easy because your parents were holding you up. But now you're ready for the next step to internalize and make this talent your own. And for that, there may be the appearance of moving backwards, but in fact, you're moving forwards. That's the progress of making what you were given into that which you actually own. Says the Baal Shem Tov, the process of tshuva is very much the same way. 
when a person is very far from God and God has decided to bring the person to him, it would be so difficult for the person to come to Hashem that HaKadosh Baruch Hu carries him. Hashem is holding you up. And when Hashem holds you up, everything is vibrant and everything is brilliant. The colors, the Shabbos, the benching, the kashras, beautiful, wonderful. But at some point, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, I've shown you what you can become. I've shown you the beauty of Torah. I've shown you your potential. But now that I've shown you what you can become, it is your job to become it. I'm going to let go a little bit. Now, just as parents, even when they let go of their child, they're obviously there to be sure that the child will not be hurt. So too, Hashem is always with us, always protecting us, always looking after us. But he lets go a little bit so that we can internalize this madrega, this level, and make it our own. And therefore the Baal Shem Tov and Rav Nachman say counterintuitively, when a person feels that they are struggling with their Yiddishkeit, in a way that they haven't done before, instead of looking at it as a failure, it is actually a mark of confidence. Hashem is basically saying, you're ready for the next step. I can let go a little bit. I don't have to carry you. You can learn to walk on your own. And therefore, fakert, the other way around, a person should get chizuk, a person should get strength, a person should get encouragement in their struggles. Because Hashem is basically saying, I trust you. I believe in you. You're ready for this next Madrega. The Svarim HaKadoshim tell us that this is actually the relationship between Pesach and Shavuos. Pesach was a redemption for which we were not really deserving. We should have been in Mitzrayim for 400 years. But because we were on the 49th level of impurity and we would have hit the 50th level, had we stayed even a few more moments, Hashem had to take us out after 210 years, 190 years early. We were not deserving of the redemption. We were considered to be naked of the mitzvahs. That's why God had to throw in the mitzvah of Korban Pesach and the mitzvah of bris milah, circumcision, because otherwise, as the Pasuk in Yecheskel says, we are arum area, naked. And that is why we are told that we left Mitzrayim b'chipazon. Chipazon means in a great rush. When you leave in a great rush, you don't have time to prepare. You're not really organized. You don't have everything you need to have. We were incomplete. And Hashem showed us things that were way beyond our spiritual madrega. The ten plagues, the splitting of the Red Sea. Our sages say that the maidservant, the lowly maidservant, saw at the Red Sea a greater visions of all, the Almighty and heaven than even the Navi Yecheskel, who saw the divine chariot and the Kisei HaKavot, God's throne of glory. So Pesach represents God lifting us up to a madrega which was the highest madrega we could possibly achieve, but it was something that was not intrinsic to us. It was to give us that sense, that vista of what the possibilities are. But after God shows us what we're capable of becoming, after he shows us the beauty of cleaving unto his presence, after he brings us to the top of the mountain, he then takes us down and he says, I've shown you what's up there. Now it's your job to achieve it. But when you achieve it, it's not going to be a sudden revelation. It'll be a laborious process of step by step by step. That is the counting of the Omer. Step by step, laborious. One step forward. And sometimes it's, one, it's two steps forward and one step back. And sometimes it's even one step forward and two steps back. But as opposed to the sudden revelation of Yitziat Mitzrayim, 
this is a gradual, laborious process of internalizing spiritual growth, culminating in Shavuos. So by the time we reach Shavuos, the idea is we're no longer recipients of God, what God gives us. We are now active participants in bringing that holiness within our souls. It's become our own level. This might be the explanation of why the counting of the Omer starts from the day after Pesach, meaning the second day of Pesach. You know, people do ask the question, after all, if the purpose of the counting of the Omer is to link the holiday of freedom, which is Pesach, with the holiday of Torah, which is Shavuos. And the basic message is that freedom without Torah is worthless and even destructive. And that is why the grain offering of Pesach is barley that is fed to animals. And the grain offering of Shavuos is wheat that is human consumption. Because the transition from Pesach to Shavuos is the transition from animal liberation to human dignity. And all of that is very beautiful. The Ramban even writes that the period of the counting of the Omer is one long chol hamoet, as if to say Pesach and Shavuos are one holiday. And all of that is beautiful and true, but the question remains, so why don't I start counting the Omer, the countdown towards Shavuos, on the first day of Pesach? Why do I start counting Mimocharas from the day after? And it might be that the answer is because it is the day after. It's a new level. Pesach is what God gives you, even if we haven't earned it. The counting of the Omer is the process by which through our own internal avodat Hashem, our own striving, our own spiritual growth, we become worthy of receiving God's Torah. It's the next step. And that is why the counting of the Omer is the next day. The Balatanya brings in the Sefer Lakute Torah an interpretation of the uh, second verse in Shira Shirim. Shira Shirim is a book of Tanakh that uh, is written in terms of the imagery of the passionate relationship of a man and a woman. And yet all of us know, as Rabbi Akiva taught us, all of the songs are holy, but Shir Hashirim is the holiest of holy because it is nothing less than a metaphor of the deep love and relationship that exists between Am Yisrael and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. God, so to speak, is the shepherd and the Jewish people are the princess. And in the beginning of Shir Hashirim, the princess talks about her lover and says, Mashcheni acharecha, pull me after you, Narutza, so we can run. The Balatanya brings the Zohar. Mashcheni acharecha, pull me, is an allusion to Pesach. Narutza, let us run, is an allusion to Shavuos. And he explains exactly on, 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 on the lines that we've been discussing. Pesach? We were not worthy of redemption. God pulled us. There was nothing we were contributing. We were like a sack of potatoes that you drag on the floor. But through the process of Aveda Hashem in the Sviras HaOmer, Narutza, we run with God. We have a certain reciprocity in our relationship. Hashem gives us Torah and mitzvot and life and bracha, but we give him back our service, our mitzvot, our learning, our chidushim. We run together. God is not just dragging us, but we give something back to HaKadosh Baruch Hu as well. This is the Avaidah of Svira. This is the Avaidah of Shavuos. Let me just mention that Matan Torah did require Vayichan Sham Yisrael. We encamped at the mountain Vayichan is a Loshon Yochid, is singular. And Rashi brings the famous Maimer Chazal that Matan Torah required that we be Ke'ish Echad Uvalev Echad, one person, one heart, that we love each other, 
that we connect to each other, that we see the value in each other, that we learn from each other. Because no one person has a monopoly on the truth. Every person has a chilek because God is infinite and because the Torah is the will of God and because God's will and God's essence are the same. So the will of God is also infinite because God is infinite. The Torah, therefore, is infinite. But infinity, by definition, cannot be grasped in its entirety. Each of us has bits and fragments of emes. And each of us needs to learn from each other to make our emes deep and complete. And only when we are ish echad uvalev echad are we worthy and are we able to receive HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Taira. My bracha for all of us is, as the world is going through a lot of turbulence and a lot of difficulty, we need to strengthen ourselves in Avodah Hashem, in mitzvahs, in Kabbalah Satayra, as we proceed ever closer to Shavuos. May all of us merit together, Ki'ish Echad Echad, to stand at the foot of Har Sinai and say, Naase Venishma. We will do and we will learn. Hi, this is Peretz Baruch Eichler, a proud alumnus of Or Sameach. Now what you just watched is one of the many programs that Or Sameach provides, leaving its impact on hundreds of thousands with so many more waiting to be reached. Or Sameach Central Campus in Jerusalem has over 300 students presently learning there. And now you can be a vital part of spreading that bounty of knowledge worldwide by logging on to donate.ohr.edu. We can step up to the plate at this pivotal moment of Orsa Math's growth and bring the next generation of Jews home.